Hello, I'm John Paget. I directed, shot, and edited the film. I'm John Norquist. I'm the president of the Congress for the New Urbanism and the former mayor of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. John, welcome to Buffalo. Thanks for joining us on this commentary. It's nice to be back in Buffalo. I love Buffalo. All right. Well, in this opening shot, you know, I try to establish that Buffalo is a water city that we were established on the Great Lakes. Chris Hawley mentions that our position on the Great Lakes was the reason we became such an important city early in the American story, and that it's a reason that we'll become an important city in the 21st century. Can you elaborate on why our geography, our position on the Great Lakes is going to become increasingly important in the 21st century? Well, I can tell you why it was originally, because it was really hard to ship cargo over the Niagara Falls. So when they built the canal, uh, Buffalo was the transshipment point. Uh, Buffalo now is the crossroads of commerce, uh, a lot of commerce, uh, new kinds of commerce like uh, IT and so forth. And it's near Toronto, which is a big major metropolitan area. It's also a very beautiful city and Lake Erie uh, is, the, is one of the most beautiful things about Buffalo. And if uh, Buffalo can improve its connection to Lake Erie, that's going to make Buffalo a more valuable place. We have Lake Erie to our west, Niagara Falls to the north. Do you see our position on the Great Lakes and our climate as an advantage going deeper into the 21st century? Well, let's hope that climate change doesn't turn out as bad as it's often predicted. But uh, there might be some advantages to Buffalo from climate change. But wh whether you get that or not, uh, Buffalo's design, its people, its history, its traditions, those are all going to become more and more important over time. And a lot of elements of the plan of Washington, D.C. are visible in Buffalo. Here are some of the interviewees are, are talking about Buffalo's street system designed by Ellicott. How does street design affect the life of a city? Well, the street design allows distribution of commerce and people in and around the city. Uh, and that's really important in a street distribution system that's well designed, like the Ellicott plan in uh, Buffalo uh, creates commerce. It's been damaged badly through the years uh, uh, with interventions that have undermined that, that network, street network, but uh, it has great value for the future, particularly if parts of it are restored. Frederick Law Olmsted is perhaps the greatest landscape architect America has produced, designer of Central Park. The father of landscape architecture. Came to Buffalo. What do you see as the importance of the Olmsted Park, Park system for Buffalo and its future? Well, Olmsted did a lot of work around the country, but uh, no more intensely than he did in Buffalo. It adds great value. It creates uh, spaces that are useful to people. He didn't just create parks to look at. He created parks that were active that you could play in. And he connected the parks with boulevards which uh, added value to the neighborhoods that the boulevards run through. Ways to other parks and have very different experiences. One of my favorite and profound comments in the film is by Howard Zemsky and Tim Tillman also mentioning how those parkways nurture a democratic, egalitarian culture. The, the parkways have a way of bringing people together, bringing the community together and raising their sites, uh, getting them to build a community vision. That's one of the great things about Olmsted's work in Buffalo and in other places around the country from the East Coast to the West Coast. And how they frame the city and how they reflect Olmsted's vision of a democratic city, an egalitarian approach. Well, why is Olmsted most famous for Central Park when his biggest work was done here? Well, uh, Buffalo uh, isn't as big as New York City, <laughs> but in many ways in American history, it's. Uh, as important, uh, you know, the only mayor ever elected president of the United States, Grover Cleveland, came from Buffalo. So, Buffalonians should be proud. You're part of a much larger thing. One of the things about the parkways, you asked about Central Park in New York. The great thing about Buffalo is that the parks are connected by these parkways. And Olmsted wanted to have an emerald le necklace and they talk about that in Boston, but there the necklace is broken in many places. But it's really mostly intact in Buffalo. There's some restorations that need to be made, but 
It's a tremendous asset in that it connects the whole city. The radials and the water and the park system in the best planned city in America set the table for the best architecture in America. You know, the interviews assert that great street design, great urban design yields great architecture. How does that work? Well, Buffalo's a complex city. That's what makes it valuable. You have uh, more than one thing happening on a block. You have beautiful buildings all on the same block, and they're connected by streets, and you can walk from one street to the other. That's what makes a great city. That wasn't fully recognized in the post-World War II period, there was sort of an anti-urban attitude that emanated from the federal government and from the design community, and that undermined what Buffalo has. But Buffalo has some of the most beautiful architectural legacy uh, in the United States, and that is a really, really strong, strong asset for the city. Buffalo, like, like so many cities, uh, made some tremendous mistakes starting around 1950. If we didn't actually have a highway built by Robert Moses through a city, we were inspired by a highway built by Robert Moses through a city. We brought Skajakwood Expressway directly through an Olmsted Park, Delaware Park. We rammed the Kensington Expressway down one of Olmsted's park. My question here is really, can these mistakes be reversed? Can they be fixed? What will that take? And what would that bring to Buffalo if we could fix them? Well, it takes willpower because it's kind of counterintuitive to uh, put a street where people travel a little more slowly uh, in place of a freeway. But the freeways have damaged Buffalo badly, and they really haven't helped with traffic distribution. Uh, covering the entire waterfront from the northern boundary of the city to the southern boundary of the city with great separated highways was very foolish. It can be reversed. You, you get rid of them. It's been undone in San Francisco, Portland, uh, Milwaukee, on the west side of New York, uh, in lower, on the lower west side. It's been undone in Seoul, South Korea, where a freeway with 160,000 cars a day was removed and they didn't even try to replace the capacity. They just put in a four-lane street to, to replace the former freeway. It's worked wonderfully. The street grid then, uh, once again, with its uh, many, many avenues and boulevards, uh, distributes the traffic. Some of the most valuable uh, real estate in the world is in cities that don't have any freeways at all, like Vancouver, British Columbia has had the best real estate market in North America the last 20 years. They have no freeways at all. They have congestion. They have more congestion than Buffalo, but they have a congestion of money, people, commerce, all these things happening. And Buffalo uh, really needs to not focus so much on traffic congestion. Traffic congestion is sort of the least of the problems that Buffalo has. The opportunity is with knitting the community back with its lake, uh, restoring the street grid, uh, creating the kind of distribution that really makes for a valuable place. All of the great cities in the world have congestion problems. There's one city that stands out in the world that has defeated congestion and that is Detroit. They're the most successful city in the world at defeating congestion. They've built every freeway, they've spread out their population over the landscape, but they're not a model that Buffalo wants to follow. So, so how do we go about doing that? How do we restore Humboldt Parkway, get rid of the 190, the skyways, when so many people see it as, oh, that's impossible, costs too much money, will take too long? It'll save money. Uh, when we tore down a freeway in Milwaukee, uh, it cost one-third of what it would have cost to rebuild the freeway when it was due to be rebuilt. Um, the New York DOT needs to understand that infrastructure that they build in cities like Buffalo should add value to those cities. The infrastructure that they've added to Buffalo since World War II has diminished the value of the city. If you take it out, the value comes back. For example, in San Francisco, when the Embarcadero, when the decision was made to remove it, Real estate prices in the vicinity of the Embarcadero went up over 300 percent immediately. And that, because the views of San Francisco Bay would be restored. Well, the same thing could happen for Buffalo. It's a, it's a strange idea. It's one that takes a lot of uh, getting used to. There are people, rational people, that say that's crazy because uh, it sounds like something that you you know, risky or you wouldn't want to do it. I can absolutely guarantee you, if you remove the freeways <laughs> along the waterfront, starting with the Skyway, 
Buffalo will benefit immediately, and it'll continue to benefit for uh, the century to come. I think one of the things I depict in this ending sequence is that good urbanism tends to create a flourishing culture of arts, leisure, recreation, innovation. How or why exactly does it do that? Well, the pace of the city is one where people need to communicate. They need to experience the city and love the city. And that's one where uh, if you code things properly and you get the infill in the neighborhoods where things have been damaged and the street grid is restored and uh, the transit system is improved, uh, which it definitely needs. If you do all those things, the city becomes much more valuable to people who engage with the city. The commerce, it becomes easier to perform commerce. It becomes easier for people who decide to live in Buffalo. And that's also true of the suburbs around Buffalo. Uh, some of them have really beautiful town centers like East Aurora where my uh, wife's mother grew up. Uh, I'm very familiar with the communities around Buffalo and Buffalo. They have a great future. Uh, and you can work on that future together as a community and really make something special. I think my favorite uh, YouTube comment on, on the video said, anything can be fixed, be patient, get the manual. The Congress for the New Urbanism is that manual. And we're lucky to be hosting CNU here in Buffalo next June. For those unfamiliar with CNU, what is the opportunity for Buffalo here with uh, CNU coming next year? Well, CNU uh, is an organization of some of the top design professionals in the world. Uh, it also includes uh, local and government officials, developers, engineers. Uh, and we come together and we try to solve problems. We argue, we don't always agree on every issue and certainly people in Buffalo don't have to agree with everything we say. But I think uh, it'll shine a light on the opportunities uh, that Buffalo has, uh, that uh, people can develop a vision for the city that'll add a lot of value. That's happened in Buffalo before. When Olmsted visited Buffalo, the vision that he put forth for the city was one that led to great, great value increase for Buffalo. And the same thing can happen uh, with this. And we're really sort of a, the other end of the bookends with, uh, with the National Historic Trust, which was here a few years ago, really shined a light on the past of Buffalo. It's beautiful architecture and it's, it's tremendous assets. And uh, the, the CNU is coming to help with the future and to help uh, put the focus on that. There's a lot of the ideas that people in Buffalo have that are just as important as anything that we'll bring from CNU. But I think it'll create a great conversation, a great opportunity for Buffalo to look at its future. Thanks again for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure.